Hey students, Ms. Shaquin here. Um, I am going to show you in a, a lesson about how to make this kind of nice wintry landscape. So what you will need is a piece of drawing paper. Um, if you have some thick drawing paper that you got at the beginning of the year, that would work well. Um, and you'll need some coloring supplies. Okay, if you're doing this for Original Works, our fundraiser, uh, you might want to do a frame around the side of your drawing. I think that looks uh, really nice when it's printed on, you know, mugs or aprons or whatever. It just gives it a nice kind of crisp edge to it. If you don't have a ruler at home, no worries. Just use something with a straight edge. Just make sure when you are um, tracing the edge of it to hold it down really tightly. There's nothing worse than it moving while you're tracing it. Now that's why we do it in pencil though. So if you do make a mistake and need to make an error, it's no big deal. Okay, so now that we have that and you can choose to keep these corners if you want, or you can choose to keep it plain. Um, I'll show you a few more examples from the other lessons. So this is some corner stuff for the snowy owl. There's an example of the corners and you can add some words. Here's without the corners. For this one, I'm just going to leave those little squares. Now your first step is to create the horizon line. The horizon line is where the land and the sky meet each other. Now this one has one, two, three horizon lines. Actually, oh, there's one right here, four. It has different ones because it has levels, almost like this is on a mountain or a hill. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to make a kind of diagonal line down here. Then I'm going to cut up with another diagonal. Maybe I'll just do three for this one and then there's a little bit of room for my sky. Or you could do another maybe more flat level. Totally up to you. Once you have your horizon lines, um, you will need to add some trees. Now, notice how this tree way back here is so small. That's because um, it's further away in the picture. It's in the background. The trees that are in the middle ground, so the middle, they're going to be medium sized. And then the trees and the details in the foreground or the things that are closest up in the front are going to be the largest that's going to create the illusion of depth. For the birch trees, we'll just do some um, lines going up. You probably, so it's going to show that it's really tall. They're tall trees so that the edge and the top, the leaves are way up there. I'm going to start with some birches. I'm going to do a really big one right up here, front and center. And if it's not perfectly straight, that's okay. Good thing about doing pencils, you can fix it and also we can erase these lines that it's going over. Maybe I'll do another tree. Now this is going to be more in the background since it's um, further up here. So I'm going to do it more skinny. In this one, it might even have some of the top. So you could do a few branches coming out if you want. I'm just going to sketch them in real quick since it's so far away. This one, is this horizon line's kind of the middle ground. So I'm going to do more of a medium sized birch tree. And I think I'm gonna call that good. Let's add some pine trees. There's lots of ways you can add pine trees. You could do a simple triangle shape or you can make it more complicated. And I'll show you the more complicated one first. So I'm going to do Maybe I'll do one right here, medium size one in the middle ground. I'm going to do my two parallel vertical lines for the trunk. And then I'm going to do kind of a wavy line on the bottom. And here, let me zoom in for you. Wavy line on the bottom, and then I'm going to angle it up with diagonal lines. And then I'll do another layer by doing a slightly smaller wavy line, angle up, and you're just going to add layers. For your top layer, I might do one more. You'll just make it a triangle. You can do um, the edges of one 
kind of like this one where it's kind of going off the side of the paper. So I would just do the wavy line, angled up, wavy line, up, wavy line, up. That's very edge of one. And to do a more simple one, and maybe when it's in the background, you wouldn't be able to see all of those details. So you could just do, actually, maybe I'll add another horizon line so that it's way, 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 way far away. Do a little triangle and two parallel vertical lines um, for the stem. And then don't forget to erase any lines that you go on top of, okay? Fill in your space. I have kind of a gap here. So I'm going to do another tree and you can start from the top and work down if you would like. So start with your triangle. Um, whatever makes most sense for you and your artistic vision. Okay, now you can choose if you want to do it during the daytime, a uh, daytime landscape or a nighttime landscape. Uh, this is an example of a nighttime landscape. You can tell by the moon, the stars. Um, I, I kind of like that and I like being able to have lots of shadows. So I'm going to do that as well. I'm going to do a full moon because that will give more light, so more shadows. Um, if you want to do a crescent moon, how you do it is just maybe like a C shape. Either way, you can do a backward C, C and then fill it in. I'll just stick with that actually. Okay, once you have those, you're going to want to use something to outline. Now, if you don't have a Sharpie at home, that's okay. You can use a black marker. You could use um, a black crayon and just do it really thick. If you don't want to use black, that's fine, but use maybe a darker color. Um, by outlining, we are kind of emphasizing our lines um, just to make sure they look really crisp and sharp. This will also look nice if you're doing this for original works. Um, because think about it, this is going to be big, but if it gets printed on something small, um, the lines become even smaller. So if you emphasize them by outlining them, then it'll just show up that much better. So take your time. And if you uh, do happen to go off of any of your pencil lines, then you just erase it and clean up the edges when you're done. Now, if you want to do different kinds of trees, feel free to. Um, birch trees are just often associated with kind of the winter time. Um, I don't know how that started. They just look really nice and a lot of winter time pictures have birch trees. Okay, so I'm going to pretend after outlining this that I'm done and don't forget to outline your frame as well. So the next step, of course, would be to clean up any edges. If you see here, I have quite a few pencil lines that I need to erase and clean up. Your next step is going to be to add some highlights and some shadows. So highlights are where the light's hitting, of course, and shadows where it's darker, uh, maybe where it's reflected in the snow. So you could use like a gray color for your shadow, um, but sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed, um, snow, the shadow on snow is kind of blue. So I'm going to pick out just a plain blue. I have this really dark blue to full color, but that's too dark. Picking out a plain blue. And for my trees, so the light's not going to go on, be able to get underneath the trees. So I'm going to add some shadow under my tree and then it's going to, if the sun's behind the tree, the shadow will be going this way. If my, if my, um, sorry, my moon was over here, then the shadow would be going this other direction, but it's almost directly behind this tree. So I'm just going to kind of lightly do the shape of the tree. Now I have a horizon line here, so I'm going to stop there, because if you imagine it's kind of like a little hill or something, then the shadow wouldn't go on top. Over here, way in the background, I'm going to do small shadows because my trees are small. This is a large tree, so I'm going to do a big shadow. You might also want to um, add some texture to your snow just by doing little waves. 
the snow isn't always perfectly flat. You could even add in maybe some animal prints could be cool. I'm just gonna do texture, so kind of like how it feels. And this is kind of a loose edge over here, um, but if your light source is really bright, you might have a more crisp edge. You might notice here, right here, this is a crisp edge. Or you can do kind of a loose um, shadow. So totally up to you. When you are done doing all of your shadows on the snow, you'll want to consider doing your shadows on your actual trees. If you see here, I have some blue, I have some more blue shadows. So I'm going to do pretend, so my light source is over here. It's this right side is closest to the moon. So then the side that's furthest away is going to be the side with the shadow. Now you can do um, kind of fade it into it. So if you see here, I have a dark blue and then a light blue. So maybe I choose um, a lighter blue crayon, kind of blend it in to make it a little kind of fade into the tree more. You can also um, vary how dark the value is by how hard you press. So that's an example of how I would do the um, shadow for this birch tree. For the um, pine trees, you'll need to decide um, where it is. So this one's a little bit tricky because the moon is almost right behind it. I don't even know if I would have a highlight on this side. I might have all shadow. Um, but for sure, I'm going to have it on the bottom and maybe near the bottom of all of these. Now for pine trees, they're very textured, right? So I'm going to do um, more jagged lines for mine, um, just to kind of replicate the texture, kind of the branchy, viney texture of a tree. For over here, I would probably, so the moon is pointing this way, so I would add my highlight here. And on this side, I'm going to, of course, add some shadow. Um, now, of course, I would have outlined this with this Sharpie by now. So that's how you do that for the highlight. Just choose a lighter color. Um, if I do my moon yellow, then I'll do my highlight yellow. It's going to be on the opposite side of where your shadow is, right? So this side of my birch is closest to the moon. So this is the one that's going to have the highlight. Now, I'm sure you all kind of know um, pine trees. You can just do them. Um, green. If you see the texture here, that was made by doing crayon and then laying, overlaying it with marker. Okay, so to get that kind of cool texture, um, this is actually Miss Gokin's example. She used a blue crayon, green crayon, then yellow crayon. So I have my blue yellow. I would add a texture with green and then I would fill in all the spaces with uh, marker. And it kind of works as a wax resist. Um, so once you have all that, you have it outlined, you erased your pencil marks, you colored it, you might want to think about the edge. You could do a simple frame, you could do um, snowflakes around the edge. Here I did snowflakes and then I did a feather to match this. So you could do maybe a pine tree. Or if you choose to do animals or animal tracks in your winter scene, you could do some of those. You could do hearts, um, more of just like an abstract design, um, whatever fits your vision, but just make sure to fill it up. Take your time. Uh, if you use only crayons, then, you know, make sure you're pressing it uh, pretty hard just to fill in all of those white gaps. All right, if you have any questions for me, feel free to send me an email, shaquin.madison at iowacityschools.org or just ask me in class. So I hope you have fun with this and um, enjoy. Bye friends.